In Martin Scorsese's classic mob drama Goodfellas, Joe Pesci's Tommy DeVito infamously lashes out against fellow mobster Billy Batts. Batts had just done a six-year stint in prison and was celebrating his release. When DeVito enters the bar, he becomes noticeably irritated that Batts is also there, mumbling to protagonist Henry Hill that he forgot Billy Batts was being released today. He reluctantly goes over to greet Billy Batts after Batts' insistence and becomes increasingly annoyed at Batts' overzealous hugging and concludes the greeting by warning Batts not to break his balls. In other words, not to make fun out of him. Batts has clearly noticed DeVito's attitude and could possibly have been intentionally over-enthusiastically hugging him to annoy him, or perhaps as a reaction to DeVito's clear lack of respect to someone who has just returned after being away for six years. Either way, it's clear Batts is looking for a reaction himself when he tells the tale of how DeVito was an excellent shoe polisher. So good, he could make your shoes look like fucking mirrors, excuse my language. This clear dig at an already aggravated DeVito accumulates into a verbal spout, with Bat saying the line we all know and love, go home and get your shine box, and DeVito leaves only to return presumably a few hours later and sucker punches Bat to the floor. DeVito's friend Jimmy Conway also joins in, and the two kick and punch Bats into unconsciousness, with the hapless Henry Hill watching on anxiously. They go on to kill Bats and bury him, and Henry narrates to us why exactly this is such a problem. In that Bats was a made guy in the Gambino crime family, meaning he was of such a rank in the mafia that he was untouchable, and to kill a made guy without getting the okay from the higher ups would result in serious repercussions, usually death. Eventually, Tommy's actions come back to haunt him. Later in the film, it is thought that Tommy himself is to be made, a high honour only for him to be abruptly shot in an orchestrated murder that was clearly sanctioned by those who matter, including Tommy's boss, Paul Cicero, as revenge for Billy Batts, and a whole lot of other things. One of the most interesting questions about this segment of the film is why exactly was Jimmy Conway not punished for his involvement in the killing of Batts? He played as much of a part in the murder and surely it would be easier to sanction his death as since he was a non-Italian, the highest rank he could ever achieve in the Mafia was an associate. Well, before we look into this, we should first ask ourselves, why did Jimmy put himself in such a risky situation in the first place by going along with Tommy? Of course, gangsters kill people, that's kind of what they do, and Jimmy is mentioned by Paulie as being wild, but there is a vested interest Jimmy had in getting bats out of the way. Jimmy was running one of Bats's rackets while he was away in prison, and made a lot of money from it, and now that he was out, Bats wanted it back, but Jimmy didn't want to hand it back over. This is briefly touched upon in the movie when Bats says that he did his time, and he's come home, and he's got mouths to feed, just before he is ambushed by Tommy and Jimmy. So why was Jimmy not punished? There are two ways really of looking at this, from the movie world and in real life. In the movie world, Paul Cicero approaches Henry and says, those bastards downtown are looking all over for Billy Bats, meaning the higher ups in the Gambino crew. Tommy is already considered to be a bad seed by Paulie, one who causes too much trouble. Clearly, Paulie has to calm the storm and avoid repercussions and bloodshed by those more powerful than him, and he has to give someone up. Losing Henry's Tommy's and Jimmy's kick-ups would have impacted him financially a great deal, so it would be better for one person to die in a fair and equitable consideration for the murder of Bats. Paulie even mentions that Jimmy is a great earner, so to lose him would be a blow. It is thought that Jimmy was one of the highest earners in the family, despite not being a made guy, and he put a lot of money in the Gambino's pockets also. And money, at the end of the day, is usually all it comes down to. Losing Tommy, on the other hand, a nut job, could even be considered a blessing. And of course, as Henry mentioned, he wasn't only killed because of bats, but for a whole lot of other unmentioned reasons. Clearly Paulie saw little reason in protecting him, and when judging all the options, the best one was to have Tommy and Tommy alone whacked. In the movie's universe, it could also be that there was never a reason to have Jimmy whacked in the first place because no one would know he was involved. 
When De Vito threatens and abuses Bat, there are Bat's people in the bar. Both Jimmy's and Henry's interactions with Bat are respectable and sincere. By the time he is beaten up, none of Bat's crew are in the bar, so there was little reason to suspect Jimmy or Henry had anything to do with the matter. Even if Paulie, a capo of the Lucchi's crime family, ever suspected it, the Gambinos were none the wiser, so Paulie could shift full responsibility on Tommy and have the matter ended with his execution. In real life, the reasons are thought to be pretty much the same, unless you were in the school of thought that Tommy was killed because of £250,000 of the Lithuana heist money going missing, in which his lover was a suspect of being the thief. His lover, Theresa Ferreira, was an FBI informant also, which would give the Mafia even more reason to kill Tommy De Simone, his name in real life, as punishment. There's a few extra juicy details, however. Information which Henry Hill did not tell the filmmakers and only divulged in 1944 in his book Gangsters and Goodfellas. Hill's wife, Karen, was having an affair with Paul Vario, the man who Paul Cicero is based off. When Hill went to prison, De Simone approached Karen for some nocturnal activities, shall we say. She turned him down, and in retaliation he beat and attempted to rape her. She went to Vario, and in his fury he revealed to the Gambino family that De Simone had killed Billy Batts, and had also killed another missing person, without getting permission. Though it's been disputed, Hill claims that John Gotti himself, as a friend of Billy Batts, personally killed De Simone and made sure it was a slow death. His body has never been found. In another book, The Lithuana Heist, Henry Hill revealed even more information, saying he had withheld it, fearing repercussions from John Gotti. In this 2015 book, he said that Gotti, a few years away from being the powerful Dapper Don, already knew that De Simone was responsible for the murder of Bats and wanted him killed. When it was revealed that De Simone was going to be made, Gotti demanded that Vario hand him over, and given that it was a timely request, seeing as though what went on with Karen and all the other agitation he had caused, Vario agreed. The book also says that Gotti knew Jimmy Burke, the man who Jimmy Conway is based off, was also involved, and wanted him killed too, but because he was such an extraordinary earner, Paul Vario did not allow Gotti to kill him. So the details are a little fuzzy, and different sources say different things, and we'll probably never know the full story. But in short, Tommy was a bad seed, causing trouble wherever he went, including the Billy Bats case. Jimmy, on the other hand, despite that he was involved, made the Lucchese crew so much money, and even the Gambino crew money, it wasn't worth having him killed. So this was a bit of a different video today. I talk about Martin Scorsese's mob movie The Irishman quite a bit, but thought it would be interesting to make a video on one of his older Mafia movies. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content on films like Goodfellas and Casino, let me know in the comments below and thanks for watching.